My guy should be out in sunny. Uh, there's the, there's the other one. Okay. Um, we're in sunny Thailand. Enjoying my uh, winter vacation. I'm not looking forward to going back to the winter like, but uh, hey. Anyway, during, uh, while I'm over here, I've met a couple of boys, a couple of lads, um, uh, ex patriots, expats, and uh, quite a few of them are fishermen. And as in my travels, I've bumped into uh, a few, and today I bumped into Dennis Dixon. Now, um, I had a vlog not so long ago, and uh, somebody mentioned Dennis in a in a sort of a legend status. So uh, there you are. <laughs> but after talking to Dennis, he's basically telling me that uh, he used to fish with a couple of the uh, uh, the other stars, like Ivan Max and Kevin Ashurst and a few others. You yeah, know, I so. <laughs> <laughs> <Be interesting. laughs> yeah. I didn't reach that status, Clyde. I fished okay. against him. <laughs> what are you saying, Daniel? Hello, hello, everybody. How are you doing? It's, uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm with Clive in Thailand. Picked yeah. him up this morning to take him fishing. Yeah. <laughs> and he's already got two fish ahead of me. But I, I, have, I have put him in the uh, in the best swim on the lake. So. Any excuse. <laughs> any excuse, yeah. Any, if, I get, if I get beat, I've always got a good excuse. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, I think a good angler always got a good excuse. <laughs> ah, absolutely, yeah. So he's, uh, at the moment, he's fishing this, uh, the slider in about 14 feet of, uh, of water. Yeah. And he's had one, uh, what we call paku, the Thai people call them jalanet, and one um, esok. That the, tar that the English, when they see them, they think they're grass carp. Ah, they okay. both. Uh, yeah, yeah. They've both been around about six pounds in weight and yeah. uh, oh, good, yeah. stretched his line out a little bit. So I think he's, he's, he's quite happy at the moment. Yeah. So there you are, I'm, gi I'm giving him a patron. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> on the more serious note, Dennis, uh, you were telling me uh, not so long ago that, um, like myself, you were in, into a lot of innovations and um, uh, mm. so on. And you did show me a feeder that uh, you designed long before, uh, uh, I suppose, well, when feeders first come out, you, you designed one that uh, attaches to the top of the feeder. Because I know we were talking about that problem where a, a fish will actually come up and peck the feeder. And um, this was a, a way of eliminating uh, or catching fish when they've done that. Because I know uh, they've done a similar thing uh, on the, on the uh, River Severn. They used to put like elastic band on to the top of the, um, the feeder. But you've, uh, you, you made one with actual... Um, uh, with, with, the, the with, a, with a ring on the top of the, the, the dome, as it were. Yeah. And what you used to do, you set it up more or less uh, paternoster style. Yeah. You would obviously bait the feeder, mm. bait the hook, then you pulled the the hook length back to the to the little ring on top of the uh, on top of the feeder. So um, it was always presented exactly on top of the uh, the bait. Obviously, the mm. weight was on the bottom. The um, um, the, 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 the hook bait was on was on the top, and um, you always caught. They never caught the fish any other way, but uh, hooked in the bottom lip. So you could imagine them going head down, tail up, and picking mm. up the bait off the top of the bowl. And uh, mm. they were always hooked in the in the bottom lip. Worked well, um, but but things have moved on since then quite a bit. So yeah. well, I, I don't know. You know, sometimes then it's what you find is a lot of these methods still come back. You know, yeah, um, yeah. I use, I intermingle a lot of my old methods yeah. um, to today's modern fishing and it works, you know, it gives me that little bit of advantage sometimes. Mm. So, uh, yeah, um, we'll have a look at that in a minute because he's actually got one in his box somewhere. But I'm going to ask him another question in a minute. Hold on. Okay, so that was very interesting. Now, um, another thing he was telling me, now, we got a mutual friend in Kevin Ashes and uh, he was telling me about Kevin where he was... Uh, you know, well, sorry, we're looking at some fish topping you. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. He was telling me that he was fishing next to Kevin once, and uh, he noticed he kept putting his hand in his pocket. Um, actually, I asked Dennis to explain what he was doing because I tell you what, what a brilliant thing in angling. Because I think you said Dennis, he, he, he was one of the hardest anglers to ever beat. Oh, he was a yeah, superb angler. Yeah, 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 he was. Now I can remember Kevin and I in Ireland, and uh, we're both on corner grade, and I'm in the next peg to him. <clears throat> and we're both catching roach, as you do there. There's lots of roach in that area. Uh, but I noticed every now and again, uh, Kevin would put his hand in his in his side pocket. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I wonder what he's doing. At the end of the day, I, 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 I did figure it out. He had a pocket full of sawdust. Mm. 
whereby normally people will swing, the, keep on swinging the ropes to hand, hold mm -hmm. them against their chest, mm -hmm. and sometimes they flip in about and mm -hmm. they lose the fish or whatever. But Kevin's had, oh, hand was always covered in sawdust. So it was like a, a good gripping device to keep hold of the fish when it was landed. And, and you know, you've, yeah. only to, you've only got to be successful in what you're doing 90% yeah. of the time as opposed to everybody's 80% of the time. And yeah. then obviously you win the matches, which Kevin used to do on a regular basis. Well, you know, it, it, it is those percentages uh, that, 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 that makes you the winner, really, because, yeah. you know, over, it's, it's like if we're bleak fishing or, or, or we're catching lots of roach. It's all about uh, time, uh, you know, um, I suppose, uh, time, time of motion. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I suppose. So what a brilliant uh, thinking that Kevin was. Yeah, uh, Dennis, you were also telling me about another innovation that, uh, that uh, Kevin came up with once. Well, it wasn't so much an innovation, it was a way of getting around a problem. We okay. were both, once again, I was lucky enough to, unlucky enough to be pegged next door to him, and uh, it was blowing an absolute gale, and we were, um, uh, you were basically fishing for bream on that particular day, and um, it was virtually impossible to see the bites on the quiver tip or, or whatever. So Kevin gets off his perch. We, we, we both had to sit, come off the uh, stands and sit on the uh, on the ground because it was so windy. Mm. And uh, Kevin got down and went in that. I could only describe it as a cesspit of a, <laughs> of, <laughs> of a bar. It was wicker baskets at the time. They, yeah, uh, that's, that's, right. that's yeah. how long ago it was. I remember was. them, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Kevin goes into his basket and he's sorting around and things are coming out of the basket. Mm -hmm. And anyway, comes out with a bot indicator. Yeah, so oh, yeah. sits there behind the, um, behind the stand, uh, manages to keep out of the wind enough to see the bites on this butt indicator. Oh, yeah. And I'm pretty sure he ended up winning the section, if not the match, on, yeah, that, yeah. on that particular day, because he yeah. got round. He got. He was good enough to get round the problem that was there yeah. on that day. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, good thinking, Angler. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, because you know, uh, I, I'm a firm believer in that. Because sometimes you you have tactics in your, you know on your mind, and you're thinking, how oh, can you improve on it? And uh, obviously, on that occasion with the wind, that was a very uh, very good thinking um, on his behalf. Yeah, so while we're over here, um, obviously Dennis has been here for about 12 years or more now. Um, he did pack up fishing, uh, obviously when he came over here, and um, I, I just happened to bump into Dennis just uh, well, about two or three years ago, I think it was, Dennis, wasn't it? And uh, we, had, yeah. we were having a little competition, we was, on a place called Wilf's Fishery, but unfortunately it's closed now. But um, Dennis is in the corner and he was watching us, and, I, and you know, we were sadly chatting, and I said, when you join us? And... Um, Anyway, he, he had a little method on the paste, and he always seemed to catch that bloody big fish. I mean, but that one match, Dennis, we both, uh, um, I had a Siamese right at the death, and you were winning the match with a Siamese, and I yeah. think i just done you by a couple of ounces, I think. Yeah, I? yeah. But uh, yeah. you use the, um, the, the paste quite a lot over here, don't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have to mention that you did run <laughs> up the lake about 30 yards with your ah, Siamese. Oh, here we go. Attached to, everybody needs to know the truth here, yeah? Ah, yeah, here we go again. Uh, any excuse? <laughs> oh, but it's interesting. He's, uh, tell you what he's done. Uh, again, it's all about in innovations, and uh, you're limited to the tackle over here. And uh, what Dennis has done, which is quite interesting, um, as you know, these fish are quite big that we catch over here. Like the ones I've had have been, you know, seven, eight pound each. Mm -hmm. And they, they take a bit of stopping. Of course, Dennis is fishing a pole now and uh, something interesting he's done. I'll show you now. He's, um, he's converted uh, uh, an old fiberglass pole and he's, he's put, um, uh, well, a puller bung in it, which is, you know, almost, uh, what, three, four meters? Because, of course, yeah. when these fish go, they, uh, they go. <laughs> I'll show you now. There you go, there's the pole. Uh, you see the, don't know if you can quite see that pull up. Let me see if I can get that a bit closer. There's about five meters yeah. of elastic inside. About five meters of elastic, there they are. So Compared when you, to, uh, yeah. it, it, the, the reason being that, yeah. that these fish take off at such a, such a whack. Yeah. That, um, uh, Eng English carp are pussies compared to these things. Oh they, yeah, they, I know. They just, they, <laughs> if, if you just had like the, the normal two or three meters of elastic in the pole, you'd get snapped unless you were fishing 20 pound line. And, mm. and they don't like 20 pound line. If you, you get a lot more bites, obviously, yeah, by fishing yeah. a lighter line and a smaller hook. And uh, yeah. that's a way of trying to get around the problem. I've, I've had fish up to, oh, double figures now on, on this particular rig. And I, I just think it's a lot more fun yeah, fishing yeah. this way than it is with a, 
yeah. with a running line and here, here and it's just something else, yeah. something different to do. You know? Well, I know back home they got these pullers, uh, you know, and they're usually only in the top two, but uh, that's interesting. Um, I wonder whether it would work back home, <laughs> but of course, uh, the, the fish probably don't fight as hard, I don't think. I think they get your initial run and then you normally get them in, but uh, hmm, interesting, interesting. She also showed me a couple of other different um, uh, methods with the uh, paste and also these uh, Thai waggler floats, which are so sensitive. I mean, I'm using one now today, but um, they're, this, they're so sensitive, just, uh, uh, you know, a number eight makes a difference between uh, it's sinking and um, you know the, uh, the tip coming out of the water. It so. it about three inches, didn't it? Just yeah. The number eight shot will move that uh, tip for at least three. Yeah, 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 no, no, uh, yeah. Three inches um, uh, lift on the float when when I uh, took a BB off. So uh, yeah, fantastic. Oh, it's a lovely looking place on here. They call it the Paku Lake. <laughs> I don't know the name. I'll try and take a picture of the front of it. I think. It's not far, it's just outside the uh, Patia, it's um, more towards John T M. Um say so it's only how much is it? Uh, hundred baht? Two hundred. Yeah. Oh two hundred baht yeah. for the day. Yeah. <coughs> Which is about five a quid. Yeah. About a five, yeah, yes, okay. Yeah, well, we enjoying ourselves. Plenty of fish topping, look. <laughs> yeah, of course Dennis done a lot of uh, uh, it is fishing on the canals. Uh, what canal was that, Dennis? Which, which uh, mainly on the Grand Union. On the Grand Union, yeah. yeah. Which yeah. was a uh, uh, great diversity of mm. fish. It went from chub, carp, yeah. uh, um, okay. to, well, I mean, all sorts of stuff, obviously, the cooking and the usual stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's areas where there's a, a hell of a lot of carp now mm. they were put in. I used mm. to have the uh, I used to have the record on the Grand Union mm. weight-wise, mm. and then I think Billy Makin shortly afterwards, or maybe a year later, broke that record That's because right. obviously the carp were growing. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, of course. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but there was a lot of chub I used to love fishing yeah. at areas like Denham, and uh, yeah. uh, cause you, you could catch carp, chub. It's a, a great canal, really. It, yeah. We used to have a lot of evening matches there, and, and uh, yeah. it but was course, uh, good. You, you were telling me uh, this um, in them days it was all waggler and and of course when the pole come al along you know um, it, it's I suppose that t took over uh, as the main method then well the skill the skill in those days yeah. was a backhanded waggler underneath the right. overhanging willows and yeah, stuff like yeah, that yeah. And, uh, and figuring out how to catch the chub without spooking them okay. and um, um, it was it was a it was quite a skillful method obviously you had to feed it right and you yeah. had to present the bait correctly but as soon as the 16 meter poles came in, that, uh, that, was that, yeah, that yeah. advantage was uh, uh, was gone. Yeah. Taken away, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, uh, yeah. it was great days, I enjoyed it. And, great days, and, yeah. And I enjoyed fishing the pole afterwards as well. It was, it yeah. was, uh, it was a, you know, at the, the, the mm. time when you, when you could, when you can actually hold something 16 meters long with, uh, mm. um, with one arm, then, mm. you know, that's, that's, that's fabulous. Yeah. Hell of a price to pay in those days. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, catching uh, carp on canals, though. <laughs> funny enough, I, I can remember a time where we fishing the Kent and um, Kent and Avon. And Mark Harper had caught this bloody big carp. He was right. he was absolutely you know belting the match. Yeah. You know. Anyway, uh, people were going up looking at it, looking at it. Even I went up to have a look. Yeah. And. Um, before the end of the match, it only jumped out of his net. <laughs> <laughs> he, must oh. have, he must have been good. Oh, yeah, Mark Harper yeah. from Bristol. Yeah. Very good angler, yeah. but <laughs> never get that. Yeah. Oh, those are days. Shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the other thing, Dennis, uh, we were talking about, they uh, used to do quite a bit of fishing with um, Ivan Marks as well. Um, tell me a story or two about that. Yeah, so you would uh, about Ivan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely man. Yeah, yeah he enjoyed good, his man. company. Uh, um, I was never part of his team or anything like that, but we no. we, we, we fished next to each other on, on several occasions in Ireland, mm. and uh, um, I'm in the downstream take to him, and either, Ivan will do anything to pull fish, and, and yeah. I was doing the usual thing with the ground bait, and he said, he said, Dan, you're putting too much ground bait in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I said, Ivan, you do it your way, and I'll do it mine. <laughs> He wanted me to stop feeding, so as so soon as I'd stopped feeding, I even would have ploughed it in and pulled the fish, you know. So. Oh. <laughs> anyway, we were neck and neck all the way through, and I can remember it was such a laugh because um, right at the end, Ivan dropped a perch. Put, uh, it just came off the hook that was about six or seven ounces. Yeah. And I ended up beating him on the day by oh, three ounces. Well, yeah. <laughs>
I never heard the last of it. You know, no, 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 no. Oh, it was, uh, it was yeah. what a lovely man. You yeah, know. I even know. I remember yeah. Ivan. He used to uh, come all the way down to yeah. the uh, to the Crown Fishery at Broxbourne to fish the matches down there. Yeah, and we always ended up having a chat and uh, yeah, yeah, just, uh, and one thing and another. But uh, lovely guy, yeah. uh, fond memories of Ivan. Nice, yeah. nice bloke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, I, I can remember Ivan when he came down on the way uh, yeah. as well uh, once and. Uh, uh, he joked once because we used to use these big eight to ten one shot floats and what happened was that uh, after the match he was talking he said i've never seen floats so big he said you need a landing net to land the float <laughs> never mind the fish <laughs> but uh he was a, he used to come up with some great stuff uh, of course i remember talking about the uh, the bream i remember him telling uh, us once that um uh, the guy next to him was catching loads and loads of bream and uh, he um you know because you know, he obviously got the mentality of a ream because he used to say about, uh, you know, how would you fancy if you're having your, your, your dinner, your breakfast, and all of a sudden the ceiling comes down, you know, comes crashing, you, you move out, the, you know, you move out of the room. Well, he used that philosophy, he told me once, when uh, a, an angler next to him was absolutely battering him, and, and what I even done then, he thought, right, you put a load of ground bait in. And he made it so obvious that the guy panicked, and the guy sat his throwing ground bait in, in case he lost his fish, you guess what happened? He said, he said, they all the fish moved out of his swim, moved into Ivan's swim. So, <laughs> another great that thing in Angler. One of his tricks, yeah. Yeah, one of his tricks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Dennis was saying, he used to fish for Trent as well, but he ran very uh, successful. Like, although he, you know, kept going. And, uh, well, there's a lot of anglers like that, you know. You keep going to venues <laughs> even though they don't do well. But, you know, you've got to adapt, I suppose. But, you know, talking about old times is, uh, uh, we're saying, Billy Makin, Billy, I'm going to try and do a, um, an interview with Billy, if I can, uh, one, uh, in the next week or two while I'm here. Um, he's a character. He's got a pub now over here, and, uh, you know, he's more interested in... Uh, wine women and drinking at the moment <laughs> um, another one I'm going to try and do an interview is an old guy named Alf now Alf got some stories and Alf is in his eight years of age now so uh, uh, we're, we're, I think it's tomorrow we're meeting Alf isn't it I think? yeah tomorrow yeah. we'll see him tomorrow yeah. Yeah. yeah so we're going to see Alf tomorrow and have a chat with him as well um, oh the another another angle I want to uh, interview is um, uh, the current world record holder Kath um, John Harvey, Harvey. Now, I used to fish with his dad uh, over in the West Country, so uh, that's how I got to, uh, got friendly with John, because we used to chat about it, you know, so, uh, yeah, so that's, come back and, and see that one. Hopefully that will be in the next day or two. Yeah, so here's the fishery we're fishing. Oh, Dennis. Well, it's a lovely day. It's um, about 21, 22 degrees. Um, it's probably going to get a little bit hotter, but at the moment it's uh, perfect. A slight wind, just keeping us cool. Yeah. Probably have a few beers after. <laughs> Yeah, just looking at the poster, um, there's a big Alapama in there, there's one in there, about £250 I reckon, <laughs> there's a Paco, which I've just caught, got red tails, alligator gar, so there you are, that would be interesting, see if we can, uh, see if we can catch him. <laughs> 